evening. Plasma filament on the south destabilized and erupted mostly within the corona. Strong pop for the size of the little filament, but short of what it takes to produce a major CME. In fact, there's only a small bit of plasma that left the corona, heading left to the central circle here on the coronagraphs. We're still expecting enhanced solar wind from the southern corona hole early this coming week. Quick note on West Coast seismicity. They've continued south of the Oregon quakes from earlier in the week, striking the Salton Sea, where the San Andreas Fault runs right up into the area. Folks, there's a new article and several animations out of the ESA on their proposed moon base. I've sped up the video here, but the link is below to their toy model and computer graphics. But I might suggest, if we're going with our imaginations, the better space video to watch is my joke video from September last year. If you saw it, you're already laughing inside of your head right now. Link below to that one. Quick note here to start the articles, as two key items came from their investigation into the inner heliospheric current sheet. Nice pick of the ballerina skirt as well. They discovered that thermodynamic models that up the complexity perform better, and that the missing solar flux problem is still unresolved, countering a paper claiming to work that one out a few months ago. Up next, remember our May 5th video giving the short version of the case against climate science. Remember they sent 10 professors and national lab scientists after it, and after they cherry-picked and lied and tried to steer focus away from the key points in the video, I trounced their shillery hogwash and showed you exactly what they did. I know for a fact they've got the message, but since they haven't responded, I'll keep going. They know full well the high sensitivity models are garbage, so they tried to work out where this extra sensitivity has come from. They correctly guessed the clouds, but then attempt to increase what's called vertical resolution. It didn't work. It's not the source of the psychotically higher sensitivity in CMIP6. But it's okay, because these guys found it just two days later in, you guessed it, the clouds. The title says it all. The cooling power of the clouds is not quite in the modern models, but more importantly, the lasting time of real cooling clouds and observations is 300% higher than in the models. That's 300% longer cooling in albedo times. Pretty much the crescendo of that story. Up next is the one that indicates the temperature of the corona is pivotal to mass flux in the solar wind. You don't say. This is an important piece of the puzzle for those looking longer term at interactions with the galactic magnetic fields. If it's like the solar wind of the heliospheric current sheet, it's going to be something like jerking the thermometer up and down on the sun. And its output. Folks, I'm sure most of you remember this one from Dr. Herndon on June 1st. We read a lot of his material in the following days, and last night he popped into the channel comment section sharing his latest one. Oh boy. Yes, the single key point of our channel's long-term study. These magnetic events on the planet are some level of extinction event. Not the whole planet, but a solid whack back into our place. And I've now read a number of his papers. His conclusions here are things every observer should already know. And if I am required to be critical of something, he worries about Yellowstone, but given how it releases pressure with geysers, quakes, and geothermal release, unable to build the pressure up, I'm a little more worried about Campi Flegri in Italy and the Eiffel Complex in Germany.